Yo, welcome ladies and gentlemen to another one of these game analysis. This time around, it's going to be the MPLPH Grand Finals. Once again, uh, this is going to be a good game to watch, uh, to analyze as well. Uh, there are a few things that I want to, you know, talk about, uh, about just MPLPH in general and uh, my content in the future. But obviously, we're going to wait for sarcasm on that one. This time, we're just going to be focusing on the games. And yeah, my prediction was definitely wrong in this one. I expected Echo to make it to the grand finals. I got that one right, but I expected Omega to win the whole thing. But it's Blacklist here. And in the end, Blacklist actually won the whole thing. But again, uh, we're going to go and watch this right in here. We're going to analyze what happened in MPLPH, the grand finals. Let's, let's take a look, right, from the draft itself first. All right. So I've said this many times, actually. Like every single time we, I, I talk about um, Echo, it's like they're really strong. Even in my prediction video, I said that they're really strong if they get their comfort heroes. And Blacklist just reads it out perfectly, man, in the draft, right? They went for three respect bands instantly, first phase. Julian, you can see the Julian band, the Atlas band, the Cho band, two bands towards Yaoi, one towards Carl. Carl's an absolute beast on the um, Julian. <clears throat> so the drafts are pretty interesting, right? Because the Valentino was left open and Valentino was actually. Oh, so this is the Valentina game, the Valentina jungle game. But yeah, what's interesting is because usually in MPL ID, the first pick will always be Valentina in the playoffs, right? If it's left open. Valentina is super prio in ID, but here it's actually the Claude. And in Indo, some teams go for the first pick Claude, but I've only actually seen it from Marky from BTR. That's very early on in the playoffs as well. Every single time Claude's open after that, it hasn't really been first picked. So it's very interesting to see that Claude is the first pick prio here for Blacklist. Maybe because... Um, Maybe because there's not that many heroes left open again that, that fits this... I don't know. Wait. Hmm. The Claude's very versatile. The Claude's very... Um, I'm trying to think about it. In terms of damage, he definitely has a damage. And DPS as well, not that bad. If you don't use your ultimate, you can still dish out damage. But it's just your range that's super short, right? But yeah, the Claude first pick is very interesting. Very interesting. And the fact that... Echo actually did not go for the Valentina. is pretty interesting as well, right? They instead went for the Farsa and the Akai. Akai, uh, we usually see this in MPL Indonesia, so it's something very normal. But the Farsa, usually we see the Farsa first pick here with the Akai only if the user is really comfortable on the Farsa, right? So that's what I'm thinking about right now as well. I think that's what Sanji is comfortable with, the, Far the Farsa instead of the Valentina. That's why he picked it up. Uh, then obviously we proceeded and it just built or uh, they were they just built their compositions around that. What's super interesting is again, um, the Valentina jungle. Yeah, I, I clicked on the Filipino broadcast here, guys. So I'm sorry, I I forgot I, I clicked on the wrong um, wrong video, but it's fine. It's fine. It's it's about the analysis anyways, right? So it's completely fine here. I think. Um, the compositions, well, we'll see again once we get in the game so we can actually see the compositions in their true form because this, um, the CG here is getting me dizzy because it keeps on moving. <laughs> All right, let's just move into the game. Game one. All right. Here it is. Yeah, so it's, it's the Valentina jungle. <laughs> this is what um, a lot of people were, a lot of people were actually like surprised with this. Pick. I was surprised with it as well because I haven't seen it since season eight. Um, season eight? Yeah, I'm pretty sure season. No, actually season nine. Season nine regular season. It was um, Aura. Hi. Yeah, not season eight. But yeah, in terms of the composition for Blacklist International, it's a. It's still. It's just their typical right. Like um, they want to stick together front to back composition. For Echo, it's more of like a poke slash pick composition though. They have a lot of like. They have a lot of CC. They have a lot of pick potential. And honestly, this is how I usually, like, this is what I expect teams to go for up against Blacklist, like, right? 
Because um, if Blacklist wants to stick together a lot, one of the ways to counter a front-to-back comp is usually by poker, by uh, pick, right? You just pick them off one by one around the map. You isolate them. And uh, so in terms of just the matchups in general, Esmeralda should have like a... It should be like kind of a stalemate in that XP lane. Melissa should win against Claude in the gold lane, uh, especially with the help of Hadida. I don't think Lolita can do much here early on to really help Oheb. He's just there to just protect him, to uh, not get dove. But yeah, um, Echo definitely have the early game priority here with their composition, right? Um, in terms of clear, I don't really know, actually. Like, Valentina, how does Valentina do? Right now, he's he's actually, like, out-farming Carl. But we'll see. It is Yeah, he's, he's actually out-farming Akai. So we'll see. We'll see how that plays off. But Echo can, can play around, like, the top side and even the bottom side because of this um, the Esmeralda. And the... Oh, yo, Sanji. Holy sh... Good zone. Good zone. Yeah. Again, they have the man advantage um, echo, right? Early on, it's going to be a good fight for them. And here as well, they don't need to fight. They it, they just use their abilities to disengage. Yaoi just went for the breath of the ocean there. All good. All good. And this is what echo wants to do, right? When they... They ganked the top side earlier, so they already set up for that turtle take. They um, went to the stalemate lane, right? It's a it's a very hard lane to just win 1v1 because both of them are just super, super sustainable. They poke for the same amount of damage, basically, right? They regen. Um, so by ganking up top with Sanji, they really just put on pressure onto the Uranus. And the fact that they're able to get Edward that low helps, um, helps them for the turtle take because... Um, Edward's just nowhere near to actually go for that. Nowhere near healthy enough to go for that. And here, honestly, you can just expect Echo to play it passive until like neutral objectives start spawning again. There's no real reason for Echo to look for anything here unless they go. They can get a pick. I don't think it'll happen though. And Oheb is just doing the, the usual, right? The usual. They try to funnel as much gold as possible towards Oheb. Yeah, Echo are playing towards the winning lane now. They know the Melissa has more um, pressure than the Claude in the bottom side, so they're trying to look for a gank, but obviously because Blacklist read that, they sent Venus to actually scout down below around the around the bottom side into the into their bottom side jungle and just opens it up a bit so Echo can't really go for that dive. And if they did, it would have been very risky. A bit too risky for a team. Um, with this kind of composition, right? Echo PH have a composition where they're already winning in, er in the early stage of the game with the neutral objective control, so they don't really need to risk at diving and losing their lead early on. They can just go for the next neutral objective, and that's exactly what they do here. Um, Medlane got cleared, though. So they're swapping, they're swapping, they're swapping like the, um, the pressure that they have. Echo are playing around the top side for this mini wave here, and the mid lane has been pushed in, so Blacklist have more pressure around this side of the map. So they're just, they're just swapping right now. And they're just dueling it out. Dueling it. It's, oh, good pick by Yaoi, man. He didn't get it in the end. Edward was able to get out of that with his Purify. Oh, that was so unfortunate, unfortunate for Echo. Oh my god. It went from bad to worse, guys. GG. Oh, that was just really good. That was insane setup by Blacklist, dude. And again, this is this is why, right? I'm gonna replay it because this is something that's super important in this meta. Um, I think uh, I spoke to Coach Ducky in the MPLI show. You guys will see the, the full interview later when MPLI is um is live, right? But, um. He and many other coaches have um, said in this meta, mid control is the most important thing in the game right now, right? Because like the side lane pressure, etc., it's all going to be dictated mostly by the mid control. If you have mid control and you can just yeah control the waves here, gank around, you basically can win all the side lanes for your team, right? And this is just like a prime example of what the mid control can give you because they're able to clear the mid lane first. Sanji's caught in the position where he can't really follow up because again, Blacklist are cutting him off, right? So they're splitting Echo up right here and notice who 
actually opens up this part of the map, right? And who has the control mostly? Edward gets out, and let's say Edward gets taken down here. It's still worth it for Blacklist International, right? Um, Edward's not the damage dealer here. He's He did his job. He's actually going to be tank tanking the damage, soaking it in, and, you know, absorbing the resources. Just taking resources away. It would have still, still been worth it if Edward died, and I think it would have been still the same outcome here in the end. Maybe Sanji wouldn't have died, but Blacklist would definitely have taken this control and obviously it all started with that mid control um yeah right now it's just mid control is uh, very very important and hey guess what because of that mid control right because they actually cleared it out benny was actually benny was sent towards the mid lane now why was he sent towards the mid lane He's not sent here to set up for the turtle because the turtle is already gone for. He's sent into the mid lane to clear the wave so that Blacklist cannot chain the turtle take towards a mid lane take. Sanji, Yaoi, both down, right? Both of the mid laners or the Rome and mid lane, the duo mid lane combo are down. Carl TZ used his ultimate so he can't defend the mid lane. So why Benny? Why did Benny um, sacrifice his lane? to come over to mid lane is because, again, he just wants to get this cleared out so Blacklist can't ke get that mid lane turret, right? So it's just, um, they're just trying to recover from that uh, play from Blacklist. In the end, it's a fourth error for, for Echo, right? Because, because Benny sacrificed that bottom side turret, it's still a turret take in the end. It's still a good, um, it's a good decision still by Echo PH here because I would much rather, and a lot of uh, pro teams would much rather lose their side turrets instead of their mid turret because the mid pressure gives you the mid turret gives you way more pressure than the side turrets, right? So in the end, it's still okay. It's not bad. It's still a it's still like two objectives going to blacklist for nothing, but it could have been another objective that's worth way more in the mid lane. Right. Item builds. Just take a look at it. Yeah, everyone's just going for the standard build. Oheb's uh, farming up a storm. He already has a DHS, steel leg plates, going towards that golden staff already as well. He's free farming. He's practically free farming. And you see, this is why it's just so good for Blacklist either way, right? Because if they got that mid side, then they would have control over the jungle right here. But the fact that they got that bottom side means that Oheb is going to get free farm even easier now uh, because Venus is always just gonna cut off the Echo PH rotations over here just open up the map a little bit so Oheb can always just recall if they do actually try to go for something um, and again this is just typical blacklist right this is what they they do usually if they get the lead they're just so oppressive but what's most impressive from blacklist in my opinion is not how they play from um, a position where they're ahead it's how they play while they're behind because I think most pro teams and all pro teams know what to do when they're ahead, right? At the top level. But not all of them can play from behind like like Blacklist. I think that's been their style for a long time. It, like, it doesn't matter if they're ahead or behind. Here as well, it's just, yeah. Boom. It's There's not much Echo can really do in that kind of situation. Because right now, at this point, right, it, it's just, it's so difficult. There's there's not really a pick that they can go for. Because, again, it's just smart positioning from Venus. And we mentioned it earlier. Uh, Venus can just cut their rotations off. And let's say Venus actually gets caught. Doesn't matter. Because Venus is going to, like, force a lot of resources from Echo PH. So, in the end, it's still not a worth it trade or roamer for all your resources because Blacklist have a very, very good re-engage tool, right? They have the damage uh, from Oheb, who's scaled up at this point, who's gone that power spike. And yeah, it doesn't matter. Venus gets taken down. We get Carl Tizi, That's a jungler for a roamer. And we get a turret down below. So it's just still worth it. And this is what's so frustrating, like, for me, uh, for Echo, probably, and for probably everyone who's up against Blacklist, right? How they're able to play the game, it's just different. It's different, man. They they always go for these trades, but it's always the worth the trades because of their execution, you know, like because of their positioning. 
And the way they utilize map pressure is absolutely amazing, right? They, they push out that bottom side. They know Benny's going to be there. They go to the jungle. And why is here? He doesn't actually want to go for the steal. He just wants to zone. But because he saw Yaoi was the one going for it, and because he saw Yaoi was so low, he's like, all right, I'll just go for the purple buff here. And then they move on over to the mid lane. Now, that movement by Wise, why I said his intention wasn't not wasn't just to steal the purple buff was because his intention was actually just to zone the members away from this mid turret, right? From this position. That's why his main goal wasn't the purple buff. He saw that Yaoi was low. He saw purple buff was open uh, and available. That's why he just, he just went for it. But the main reason he actually went here is, again, the zone. To give Oheb and Haji a uh, space to actually siege the turret in the mid lane. And that's exactly what happens here. They just siege the turret in the mid lane. Easy peasy. They get it. And guess what? They transition it over to the turtle. It's, ah, it's so clean. <laughs> it's, it's so clean. All right, yeah. At, at this point, they've they've absolutely snowballed. I don't think there's um. Oh, I don't think there's much the echo can do in this situation. They can go for those trades, but again, as long as the trades only happen, um, like if Edward and Venus are the ones who get caught, I think Blacklist are completely fine with that because they're gonna be able to trade it for something even more worth. What's crazy here is that Blacklist is staying with low HP, right? They have a man advantage. For a while, but yeah, okay, they, they reset. I was about to say, it's a bit too risky if they actually go for it. They can obviously just regen back in their own jungle. They have the lead, so they they don't need to make a desperate play for a single turtle. So they reset, they go back to the mid lane. Sanford just gets absolutely melted down. That's Sanford out. Um, He's out, right? He's basically out. Even though he's 1 HP, he's not dead. The fact that he's 1 HP and he's, he can't join a team fight means that Blacklist will have control here. And again, it just comes down to the setup game. What's interesting is Blacklist do not want to commit ever, right? They never, literally never commit. Usually, any I, I would actually say any other team would actually take that turtle, right? But I think Blacklist are more concerned with denying resources from Echo than actually taking resources for themselves with that turtle, right? Because they're, they feel it's a bit too risky. The amount of gold and XP you get from that turtle isn't going to be worth for that, the amount of risk. It's, it's pretty insane, the, like the fact that they calculate this super fast, right? The way they gank as well. The fact that they play around that, bo that top side so well, right, but right as the Lord spawns because they want to chain it to that objective... And they just cut them off. Yeah, they, they pushed up the mini wave earlier. And again, it might look like, you know, Blacklist just took a fight there. But if you actually dove in it, into this position, it's it's so brilliantly set up by Blacklist. Um, Oheb actually goes for the clear here. Notice how he doesn't, doesn't hit the cannon minion at all, right? He hits it now just a bit before he actually comes in. But he was originally setting up for a slow push. Then he saw that his teammates wanted to go for a clear or just wanted to go for a fight here. So he went on it and he just cleared it out so that they actually have pressure here. Because if there's no minions here, Echo can actually just play around this turret, right? They can. They can play around the turret. Obviously, Crawl... Um, wait, who is this? Yaoi? Yeah, Yaoi is not in the position where he can play around the turret, but Benny can definitely just play around here. Crawl TZ can follow it up and they can get Benny out. But because Oheb swapped instantly... Uh, he went from a slow push instantly to just shoving the wave just to create pressure for this fight to happen and this play to happen. Means that Echo can't play around this turret that much, right? Uh, there's a minion right there. And yeah, they just take the fight right here and they are able to translate it to an objective. If the mini wave wasn't shoved in, um, this turret would not be as vulnerable and they just take it. So again, it's just like Blacklist are playing two, three steps ahead. Nine minutes in, 5,000 gold lead. Edward opens up the map. Again, it's just the Lord Dance. They don't need to go for a fight. They're just baiting the Lord. Uh, they're baiting a fight with the Lord, right? They hit the Lord. They know they have the man advantage, but they don't. They never commit. They don't need to commit. They're more concerned with denying gold and XP resources away from Echo than actually getting the Lord, right? Because the Lord is going to be there um, forever. If Blacklist don't take it, it's still going to be there. Blacklist are just going to use it to, again, force these fights. And if Echo keep on going for it, it's an easy game for Blacklist. Echo tried to go for it once. They know what Blacklist like to do. They know how they do that. So 
Echo don't contest, and I think I think the game's over just like that. Um, I don't think Echo can come back from this. I don't remember how the game. I know it's four two in the end, but I don't think Echo can come back from this. I really don't. Do it's with with a six thousand gold lead in ten minutes, and with um with you got with um Echo only having their tier two in the mid and top, it's not really comebackable. They they can go for like a desperate fight. The only way Echo comes back here is if Blacklist makes a mistake in the fights, right? And we're gonna see this happen again from Blacklist. Um, the way they manipulate the waves, they clear out the top and mid side, and they let the bottom side just push right why slow push they're just slow pushing that bottom side or letting the the waves build up as they just poke down and siege down the mid and top side turret they're just going to be able to um bounce echo priority on defense in the mid and that top side by clearing those two waves and now you can see that it comes in perfectly you have a, we have one full wave in the mid lane uh, able to take out that tier two in the mid lane that top side has been poked down by the minions that was shoved in and you have one and a half waves here in the bottom side coming in, right? There's a, this wave over here, and there's another wave that spawned and is on the way right here. So they're going to have two waves in total. They're going to use this first wave. It, this is balanced perfectly, man. It's absolutely amazing. Um, you can see. Uh, they use this wave right here, and the reason Blacklist don't play for the mid wave is because, again, they know that the turret passive is still on. They're just using it to get that turret passive down. Here, the turret passive is used as well. One whole wave cleared. The Lord didn't get taken down. And this is where it's just amazing, right? Because the wave comes in perfectly in time. So in the end, Blacklist aren't able to commit because they weren't able to find a pick. They weren't able to zone Echo away completely from this base turret. But if they were able to, if they, if Echo just, you know, um, went over to the mid lane or they weren't here, this second mini wave would basically be the setup necessary for Blacklist to take that base turret down. The fact that they've already gone the base turret this low just with the first Lord shows that again blacklist they know how to maximize how to utilize their um every single bit of the game so well it's it's honestly just disgusting right it's it's so disgusting and they they use that to chain in the mid lane because again mid lane turret passive was taken down already so blacklist just take that turret and again Venus, com it's completely okay for Edward or Venus to be taken down here. No problem whatsoever. The positioning, dude, at this point, I, it's, it's just disgusting, right? The way they play every single time, even here where you think that they overcommitted, you think Oheb got caught there. Well, he did get caught. He did get caught in the breath of the ocean right here. Uh, he got knocked up. But even when he's caught, he's still behind the front line. He's still behind Edward. So it just makes... Um, it very tough for Echo to actually collapse, right? Because again, and Oheb already plays the Battle Mirror image behind, so he's he can always just get out as long as he has that front line. And you can see the front line from Blacklist, I think, are the main MVPs here um, in this game, right? Because every single time, Edward and Venus, sure, they they've been taken down uh, a few times this game, but they are the only ones who've been taken down this game. So they are literally playing their roles perfectly. Front line, hey, Edward 0, 2, and 4. You think, hey, he's feeding, he's inting. No, that's what he's made for. That's what the pick was for, right? It doesn't matter if Edward gets taken down. It really doesn't. They got a base turn in the mid lane and the bottom side. And guess what? They got Carl TZ too. I would actually give the MVP to, to, yeah, to Venus or Edward for this game, right? The frontliners are doing so much for their team. Everyone's doing their part, but I think the standout has to be Venus and Edward here. Like the way they're just cutting, the way they're actually placing themselves in front of their of their team. It's 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 very like it's a fundamental thing. It's a very normal thing. You would expect um tankier players to play like this, but again, in the highest level when you're playing on stage, the decision making isn't that easy, right? I mean, when you play rank, a lot of your tanks don't even play in the front line, so uh yeah. <laughs> And I think, that, again, right, Blacklist are a special team in a very different way compared to, like, other teams. Other teams are flashy. They go for, like, crazy mechanical plays. Um, they, they do all these crazy things to actually achieve victory, right? They go for picks. They go for flashy plays. They go for assassins. They go for the uh, pick comps, poke comps. But 
how Blacklist plays the game is they don't need anything flashy. It's just efficient. Okay. Just as I say that, caster curse, bro. Oheb gets caught. Now, that's not good. Echo can actually, like... Yeah, Echo can actually take this. If Venus dies here... He doesn't. He doesn't die. And it's Benny who actually gets low. That's crazy. But, but yeah, alright. Back to my point, right? Now that the fight's ended. Uh, Blacklist, they don't need flashy plays. They don't need crazy mechanically gifted players. Even though they, they do have mechanically gifted players. Every single one of them. But... The main thing for Blacklist is it's just the fundamentals. <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that. Blacklists are playing the game how it's meant to be played. Yeah, that's it. They don't need anything crazy. They don't need anything special. It's, it's just efficient. I think that's the best word to use, right? When you're talking about this team. To be so consistent and to, be, to play like absolute robots, rarely making mistakes like this, it is insane. You're up against Echo, right? You're making Echo look weak. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. Oh, man. Item builds. Uh, let's take a look. Oheb is absolutely a monster right now. He swaps that steel leg plates over. He's going to build an Athena, I think. Building towards that Athena because of the damage coming in. Uh, most of the burst is magic, yeah, from the Kadida um, to the Farsa. Most of the damage that can actually get to him is that magical burst. So, and again, Blacklist, look, right? They're not focused. They don't commit onto ending the game. They're, they go for just the base turret first. You know, they go for the base turret. They're just trying to limit Echo. And then they go for a little pick here. Venus gets taken down. But again, hey, everything is always worth it for Blacklist. The fact that Blacklist go for this right after they get the base turret just shows that even more, right? It doesn't matter. Okay, Venus gets taken down. We still have that base turret. Let's say Blacklist don't even get the kill on Yaoi. It's still worth it. It's a kill. It's a roamer death traded in for a base turret. But obviously, they get the roamer. They get some damage onto the base. They go for it, and they just utilize this perfectly. Again, Edward soaks in all the damage, and they have enough to win the fight. It's just so brilliant. Edward and Venus, all of the deaths are on Edward and Venus. Dude, that is insane. I want to see who got MVP. I think Wise will probably get MVP. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I mean, every single member deserves MVP. But um, for me, I think it's... I think I got to give, like, special props. I would uh, give the MVP over to the um the setup there right wise played an amazing game everyone played an amazing game everyone deserves mvp uh, there's a case to be made for every single one of the players but um i think the frontliner just completely smurfed this game venus and edward they died but hey that's what they're meant for it's not what they're meant to do right um